Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. You guys are here. You're here for a repair, data recovery? What are you guys here for? Well, we got something nice for you guys. This is the A2442 2021 uh, 14-inch uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, I believe this is the one with the M1 Pro, um, M1 Pro Max uh, chip. Well, the customer is here just for data recovery, so we're gonna be focusing on that. Since these ones do have um, a security chip that's built onto the processor itself it usually makes it a lot more difficult for doing any type of repairs in general, especially for grabbing data. So um, usually we like to focus on either doing a repair or doing data recovery. For this one, we're focused on doing a data recovery. So let's go ahead and take a look and see really what's going on. Customer uh, just said it wouldn't power on anymore. So they're not sure why that's the case, but that's why we're here. We're here to figure out why. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We have, um, what, one, two, three, four, five total ports for power, which is for USB-C. Um, they're all technically USB-C anyway. MagSafe is basically a USB-C port. Um, it's the same power line. So you get five volts, 0.3 amps on one port. And let's see what about the other one. Five volts, 0.3 amps. Probably they'll be the same on at least the fourth one. Do I have to flip this one over? No. 5 volts, 0 0.00 amps. Okay, so that's a little bit different. So usually when you have different readings on it, that's gonna indicate, um, a lot of times if you get five volts, right, there's, there's obviously a short, it could be long anywhere, right? If you're getting five volts on some ports and maybe like 20 volts in other ports, maybe it's a CD32 problem, which is the USB-C charging circuit, most like that as a problem. We see that two are on one side of, uh, well three technically, the MagSafe is on uh, one side with the other two USB-C ports and then um, the USB-C ports is by itself over here. So let's go ahead. We need to open it up anyway because we need to see what's going on because there's nothing much more we can really do here. We just do a quick little measurement and see what's going on. So let's go ahead, open it up and take a look to see what's going on inside. All right, let's remove it. Let's see what we got here. We got a board, right? We got a really nice laptop. Always love how they look. We notice something right away. And if we go over here, that is a little um, dot. What it is is when a liquid makes contact with it, it turns red. So this makes a lot of sense because the port that we had a problem with here that had a different voltage is right above or right below where um, that dot is. So probably there's gonna be liquid, maybe corrosion that's on that side. Um, otherwise, we don't really see it outside. I mean, obviously it's there, right? Something's been hit in that little spot because it's easy when there's a little crevice there, but we don't see anything else that really impact, impacted it. It looks to be pretty clean just a little bit. Like as far as the board is pretty clean, this is just like dust and dirt, which we can just uh, clean off, which actually I'll probably just do that right before I open it. So you guys uh, will like it, especially with the fans and stuff. So um, let me go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and uh, remove the board. We'll go ahead and check out this area that's in the corner because that's the, definitely the one. And we'll also do a scan on the board. We'll take a look, but there's probably gonna be corrosion just probably a little bit there on that area that's causing this thing not to power on. Um, so let's go ahead, remove it, and go from there. All right, so let's lift it up. Flip it over. Do you see anything? Don't see anything crazy, obvious, but we probably have to go under the microscope just to double check the area and see. Don't see anything crazy there, but that's it. That's the board. It's out. So let's go. Um, first, let's do a thermal cam and just see if there's anything, because I don't really see, you don't see like a clear liquid spill that's actually there. Um, first, let's try that, and then um, we'll see if it, anything lights up there, and then we'll go under the microscope. All right. We'll go right into the port area. Let's see. Port actually looks to be healthy. Nothing obvious there, otherwise I'm going to show you guys. But keep an eye on this chip, big one, if you guys can see it. Yeah, you'll see it. Hopefully, it should light up when we plug it in. Um, probably indicating that it's fine. Yeah, you see, it's getting a little bit warm by itself. It's a little bit orange there. We're looking at this one. See anything crazy? And it's creaming. You can see, it's a little bit orange on the top part. We're getting five volts, about 0.31 amps. Let's see if we see anything anywhere else. We see an area over here. That's getting, that looks like it's on the other side. Let's flip this over. You 
Is that what, like an ISL? All right, so we do see if we flip it over, and maybe there's liquid there. I think I see some liquid damage. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at it. Let's scan anything else. Let me just see, make sure. Sometimes you can see other things too. Yep, so it looks like we do see that this is lighting up. It's a pretty big area. Well, let's go ahead and let's uh, go under the microscope because actually I think I saw a little bit there. It's a little bit of blue, just slight. That's why we have a microscope to take a look. So let's go there right now, let's take a look. All right, so if we go here, let's see. Aha, uh -huh, there's a slight little bit of corrosion there. Okay, and we see, oh wow, look at that, just a little bit. Just a little bit of this here, just a little bit of chunk. Yep, so there's a little bit of uh, liquid damage there, which would cause it. And that's ELC. ELC 180, which actually I think we might have a replacement. So let's, but let's take a look further under. Uh, let's see if I can go at a better angle for you guys to see. A chunk of nasty under there. So we're going to bring up our board view, and we have two areas. We have the top part here, which is our PV VIN um, 5V USB C. So this is on our USB C. Uh, circuit and it's also a, bit, a little bit of chunk here. It looks like we're just gonna have to do a fix What we could do is we can do like um, we could do a reflow first to make sure uh, if we need to replace um, This one here we could do that, but usually whenever you see any type of liquid damage um, You'll see it usually on where the power is going right because if we see something some stuff here You'll see it on some sides and even this whole entire area here and this is more on the inside But these are all ground which is good because if uh, liquid got in this area if it got in the middle here If it got shoved in here on this side um, It's ground so it doesn't really matter as much as for doing it otherwise But we do see that there is damage here But we noticed that there was damage on that one side there and not the other because you have a ground on the other side so if um, the current is going through there, right? It's not going. It's only going to affect the area where the power is going through. So um, we see that this is the problem. So let's go ahead. Uh, we could do a reflow for it. If we need to replace it, we could just do a replacement for that, um, and that should be all good and dandy. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and just remove this and replace it. We're going to need to check underneath anyway, and we do have that replacement chip. Um, when you do that, when you remove it, you can see that there's actually balls underneath there, and that's part of the actual chip itself. And we're going to have to clean this area as well because you can't just easily do a replacement for it uh, without doing that. Um, we'll speak about that a little bit, but we're going to remove this cap, and we see that that liquid damage actually caused damage to the board where the pad is actually uh, gone. It's not completely gone there because sometimes when it's completely burnt, we have to recreate a, a trace. What we're doing here is just going to scrape that part of the board because there was still a little bit of, of it left. And what we can do is we can just add some solder to that, and that's going to recreate what that pad was from before. But before that, we're going to go ahead and remove all the balls that are underneath uh, the chip there that's actually just still attached to the board. We need to clean that off so we can make a good connection because the new chip is actually going to have the ball there. We're also going to be uh, resoldering here. If you can see now we recreate the pad and we're going to recreate all the other pads and so we're going to go ahead and clean it off. So we need pretty much what the surface of the board is because when we put the chip on, the chip is going to have the balls underneath there. If we didn't have that, we would have to do what's called a reball on it and that's pretty much what uh, you would have to see, you would have to have a stencil layout and stuff like that to get it perfect. But for these chips, we are uh, we have accessibility to them, so we're able to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and replace these areas. We can see that the cap has been replaced pretty well. looks to be good. Now the BGA chip is good, and uh, we're going to go ahead and power on and test it now. All right, so we put it back. Um, let's go ahead and test it now. Let's see your voltages. Usually this thing turns on so fast, even if it works anyway, right? Okay, we heard the chime, we're getting our 20 volts, so. Oh, okay, there we go. Yep, and we do an Apple logo. It's loading. Yes, so it looks like it worked. All right, and we're actually at the screen there. So we were able to log in and uh, get the data off of the A2442 uh, 2021 M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch. <laughs> So this is good, we already log and grab the data. This is one of those cases where um, we didn't have to worry about uh, flashing uh, the firmware there, which would make the data recovery a bit more difficult. We had to go another avenue for doing something like that if that was the case, because this one does have that security that's baked into the processor. Usually when we do types of repairs for them, we see a lot that we have to do a firmware flash again um, to get it working, because it shows voltages, but 
uh, it doesn't like it sometimes it won't power on and so we have videos dedicated talking about that this is one of those good cases we're able to get the data it's, it's a bit more straightforward thankfully so if you guys enjoyed this video uh, please leave a like it really does help us a lot subscribe for more content we do lots of macbook repairs macbook data recoveries and uh, hard drive repairs ssd repairs usb uh, data recoveries and all those other great wonderful things that we do uh, on this channel if you guys are interested in sending in your device for either a data recovery or uh, a macbook repair you can go ahead and check out the links in the description down below uh, we have all of our contact information there we work on lots of cool things so thanks guys for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys next time thanks a lot guys bye